Hey guys, we are here today in Valheim, and the important question is, are any of you smithies, or if not smithies per se, were you otherwise trained in the metallurgic arts? Because today we're going to talk about workshops, and I'm going to show you how to build a highly efficient workshop with a cart stall, firewood to throw in your kilns, coal dispensers directly next to the smelter coals, and then you can get your ingots and deposit them immediately into chests with enough room for your workbench and your forge completely set up with attachments and upgrades. And although I got this whole thing set up with stone and wood, you can build it in just basic wood, so you can get this very early on in the game, or you can soup it up like this with some more advanced building materials. So the first thing we're going to do is place down our first kiln. It'll be near the back left of the building, but you want to leave a little room behind it and to the left of it because we will be expanding just a small bit on that side. Once you have a location for it, go ahead and switch to flooring pieces. And then you're going to kind of, there's a little bit of a point right here in the kiln on the direct side of it. And we're going to place a board about halfway under that and halfway on the board put the point just like that and then once you have that down we will add a piece behind it and to the left of it and then between those kind of making a square once that's in place we're going to use two chests vertically on the side of the kiln and this is going to map out roughly how far apart we want the kilns. And then you can place your second kiln directly beside that and roughly the same depth as your other kiln. Now once you have both kiln in place and marked out, we're going to go ahead and line the entire border of the floor. And you can do this with stone pieces if you have stone cutting unlocked and then you can do the entire building first and place the kiln on top of them. We're going to be showing it with wood pieces that way you can see how to do this at any stage in the game. And we're going to go from this back corner piece we've already placed out and we're going to go 10 towards the front of the building. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 here and we're going to go 7, 8, 9, and 10. And then we're going to be going 10 across and this building can be done 10 by 10. 8x8, eight eight. it depends on how much room you want around all of your smelting pieces and how many smelters and kiln you want. And 10. And then go ahead and go around the entire building and map out 10 floor pieces. So once you get to the point where you are trying to go around the two kiln, it is really hard to place floor pieces there. So what we're going to do is start placing in the front of them and we'll go ahead and move around and we can get rid of these chests now that we know where we're gonna place it. And once you get in the front of them, you can go in between them and then it should be a little bit easier to place that piece in the back right there. And that part might be a little bit tricky getting them placed on the back end of the kiln, but it is doable. And then make sure you place one more row in front of the kiln, all the way across. That way we have a little bit of a border for where our smelters are going to go, because you want a decent walkway between them. And to place the smelters, I just like to put my back directly to the opening of the kiln and put the ingot dispenser on my left side. And then I'm going to kind of just get as close up on those wood floors as it lets me. You can see it flip red right there. And we're going to place it directly in front of the kiln on each one. As close as it'll let me get. The smelter and kiln are the only thing that have to be touching the ground in this entire thing. So once they're placed, we're going to go ahead and finish the entire floor. So once we have the entire 10 by 10 floor placed, we're going to start doing posts and beams. You can use the four meter log poles and it will make the roof stronger overall with this but we'll be doing it with the wood beams here again just so you can see how to do it right when you start out in the game we're going to start in the corner two high and then two spaces from that so you got one two and we're going to do that around the entire exterior two poles vertically every two spaces 
Now once we are done with all the poles on the exterior of the building, we are going to go ahead and line the top with horizontal poles. Two of them connecting each one, giving ourselves a, a railing over the entire top. Now the reason we're doing the poles is so we can attach roof to it. If you plan to wall this in, you can just do walls instead of any of these beams and just cut right to the chase. But the beams are here because you can have this entire thing be kind of open air and like a canopy if you prefer that style and it will have a roof that way it's protected from rain still. Now once we have the entire top edge lined up, we're going to go ahead and place wood poles on each row of beams, even with them, two spaces into the interior across the entire thing. Now you'll see as we go that two spaces is right there and then we have another two space right here in the middle of the smelters which creates a pole in your walkways. The roof will be plenty strong if you place these poles in your walkways. However, if you don't want those there, like I'm not going to want them there, then I will show you how to stabilize the center of the roof without using those poles. But go ahead and go everywhere else, two spaces, place the poles too high everywhere along that grid, and anywhere you don't want a pole specifically, leave it out and I'll show you how to give the roof plenty of strength without those. Alright, you can see here I've placed them every two spaces along that grid except for my center walkway which I don't want to have poles in. And then there are some spaces that line up on the kiln that you cannot place them on the floor. And again, we'll I'll show you how to strengthen that as we do the roof. So we'll start that. I recommend using 26 degree roofing so it's not crazy tall. And you'll go ahead and just start on the corner and work your way around on the entire outer rim of the roof. And then once you finish the outer edge, we're going to start on the second layer. And this will be as you go through and you place them, you'll see that you just attach a third piece to the row of beams that are right there and it will give the roof some more strength. So go around and place beams as you go on the pieces that need to connect to those beams with the roof and it'll give it three layers high of the beams. And you'll see it switch from yellow to green on the strength of those roof pieces. So now if you finish that second row and you can see we're above the kiln and we don't have full strength, we have yellow pieces and some orange pieces above the kiln where everything, everywhere else is green. The way we're going to do it is we know where those beams go right here on the corner piece, two spaces over and attach it to the roof first and then attach it down into the kiln. And when you attach something to the kiln, since it's stone, it becomes a foundation piece, which gives that whole section of roof strength. And right here, we know it goes two spaces from those two, and same thing, attach into the kiln, and it will give it some strength. And if you don't know already, the way the building strength works is blue pieces are foundation, and from those pieces, you can essentially attach five pieces to it of strength, and it doesn't matter really what way we go. Once I go out, we have one, two, three, four, and you can see it get from green to yellower to red. And then the fifth one should do a check and break. So that's as far out as you can get. And it doesn't really matter how you attach any of them. You can just go five from a blue piece. So since our blue piece is elevated right here, because it gets strength from the kiln, we strengthen the entire roof area very well. After you've worked your way around the kiln there, we go ahead and do another layer of roof. And then since I am missing poles here in the middle to go up and connect certain pieces of the roof, I'm just going to go ahead and do another layer here and it should be able to handle it. You can see it turns like reddish orange there. We're getting to where it's weak, but it can handle me putting it on until we strengthen it. All right, and you can see we're red in a whole lot of areas and then some are yellow and orange, uh, and that's dependent on how many pieces are connected. We're gonna go ahead and take on the poles that we do have, connect them up so that we can give it some sense of strength. And we can do that in the four corners of what we have up right now. And this is where we're gonna use that whole trick of connecting to stone with these and we're going to connect these vertical ones down into our smelter giving it blue foundation and making that whole section of the roof good 
and you're going to use that everywhere you need to. So even if it's up like this and you see we're orange there because this whole pole is really long, you can connect partway up. If I actually aim right, you can connect partway up and connect an angle piece to it and then help out that roof and turn it green instead of orange by connecting to this smelter. And if those are even too low for you, just use the 26 degree ones and they'll bring it up a little bit higher and make it a little bit more out of your head space. And you can come like this on the side and then connect it all the way to that one there. And those will be plenty strong to hold up that roof. And then this primary one we have kind of just floating in the center here with no beam. We can't even put another beam vertically because it's going to start breaking. It's that weak. So what we're going to do is take some 26 degrees from this beam that we know is good and connect those up to it and it'll give it enough strength for us to drop a beam down and then we can start connecting beams over near the smelter and all we got to do is make it to that smelter and it's going to give it plenty of strength right there and it looks all ridiculous but it gives enough strength for that whole beam section and the roof on this corner isn't fantastic but it's decent you can toy around with the way these beams look coming off the smelters here and make it look how you want but you see here that you can create kind of whatever design you want utilizing those and it will give it plenty of strength all right, and then once you have that whole section with the beams sorted out, you'll just throw on the last couple 26 degree corner pieces and close in that roof, and you can add a couple beams to those if they're not strong enough. And this is where, if you have core wood and the log poles, because the strength works on a number system, they are twice the height, and you can use those as poles, and they will give more strength to the roof across the board. And you can see here, we have a pretty solid roof. We only have a few issue areas. And that corner piece is primarily the one. And we can use the whole beam system to kind of connect wherever we want to give strength to particular pieces and it will help out. And the last thing I kind of recommend doing is wherever you're going to have your entrance, you can put a canopy off the edge to cover the stairs so they don't rot. Or you could just take out those first two pieces on that side and place stairs going into the ground there and then just stick like a little half wall right there the entrance so when you go in it's already covered and then you can just turn over and go right to like where your chests are and there's a few options I obviously said that you can leave this open air if you really want to and you're not really worried about mobs coming around and bothering you or you can drop a half wall along the whole thing and make it where you can see out but mobs can't walk directly in you can do one full wall or you can close the whole thing in and if you have stone cutting you can snap wood pieces you can see they snap right there to it if it's a stone floor it's very easy if it's a wood floor if you place the stone at all on the floor it will snap because it doesn't have the strength but if you get them to snap to the exterior on the post they will attach you just have to make sure these stone are touching the ground and foundation and then you can see here as we move through that you can place your firewood right next to the kiln that way you can just access wood very quickly you can place your firewood outside and they will rot down in the rain to half but they're still worth 50 wood no matter what so that won't be a bother other than the visuals of it and then wherever you place your chests, I kind of put mine all along this wall right here near the entrance. If you are interested, you can place chests on top of each other by placing a little one by one piece there and then placing a second chest on top of it. And then you can remove that one by one piece and both chests stay and are accessible. I don't quite care for it, but you are able to use that system. And you can see there's ample room for your workbench add-ons to it your forge over in the other corner with all the add-ons for that anyway i hope this was helpful for you guys something somewhat simple to build given that it's just a square i uh, know intricate designs and gives you a very efficient workshop that kind of flows right together 
So you can just grab coal, slap it in, grab ingots, put them in a chest. If you want to see more videos on Valheim, make sure you hit that subscribe button down at the bottom. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.